All right, guys, so today we have an extra special treat because as you know, every month we ask John McBride, who's our director of fleet and facilities, a variety of really random questions which he answers. Um, he's answered all sorts of different questions from Outward Bound related to questions about his socks and um, other random stuff. My dance moves. His dance moves, yeah. And today um, we're celebrating his 20th anniversary, so it made sense to do a video so you guys could see what he looks like. First of all, this is our Outward Bound hero, John McBride, and um, we can ask him some questions. So. I think the questions really are more about your 20 years now with Outward Bound. So I'd like to hear a little bit, John, about how you ended up working for Outward Bound. Well, thank you, Amanda. Thank you for the invite. I also wanted to say I'm kind of dressed up today. This is not my normal attire. Um, I was meeting with the Coast Guard down in Portland earlier, so I kind of like to dress up for that. And uh, when your name is McBride, uh, you got to wear green every day because every day is St. Patty's Day. So I'm... Uh, Luck of the Irish, I guess you would say. Um, how did I end up working for Outward Bound? Well, that's a kind of a funny little story. Um, back in the winter of 96, uh, before the, uh, my wife and I had any children, um, you know, you sit around in the winter and you kind of try to make the best of things, and sometimes you get in little spats, little marital spats. So uh, we had one of our little marital spats, and I kind of stormed out and went for a drive and ended up down in Rockland. Um, and I pulled into McDonald's to get a cup of coffee. Went inside, which I normally don't do, but I went inside and I had a cup of coffee and I was sitting there looking at the paper, the newspaper that was on the table. And I opened it up and right there was a big ad that said uh, maintenance supervisor, um, job wanted for maintenance supervisor for the Hurricane Island Outward Bound School. Mm -hmm. And I got this little tingle inside and I thought, wow, Outward Bound, I know about those guys. I knew a few people that worked for Outward Bound. And I read through the job description, and it's like, I can do that, I can do that, I got that, I can do that. So it just thought, you know, I'm kind of in between jobs here. I've been working on the schooners for a number of years and running passenger boats, and I thought, this might be fun. So I sent in my resume, took a few pictures of the house that I was in the process of building, and lo and behold, uh, about a week later, I got a call from Captain Ed Dietrich, nice. who was the director of fleet um, at that time, and invited me in for an interview at five in the morning. Captain Ed used to come in at four, and so he wanted to meet with me at five, so I said, no problem. So I went in and sat with him, and we had a great discussion. I liked Ed, I met Chris Wells, um, who's still my right-hand man. He was there at the same time. And we had a great chat, and Ed said, well, I've got a few more interviews to, to do, but I, he said, I gotta be honest, I'm moving your your, your resume to the top of the pile. Wow. And a few days later, I got a call. He said, you're the man. And I said, that's great. I will be there at five o'clock tomorrow morning and we'll get started. So I got to tell you about my first day on the job. I would love to hear about your first day on first the First day on the job, March 4th, 1996. Still kind of winter time, as you know, in Maine. A little bit of snow on the ground. So I come into the boathouse. This is at the old Rockland base. There was a big administrative building, and then there was the boathouse next door. So on the outside of the administrative building was a little box, it had a little red light and a little buzzer. And as I'm coming into work, I noticed the little red light is on and the buzzer's buzzing. And I came in and I asked Ed, I said, what, is, what does that mean? The light says high water. And Ed said, you know, I've been here 14 years. He said, I've never seen that light on or heard the buzzer, and I have no idea what high water means, you better investigate. Well, two hours later, I had the septic tank opened up, the cover off, the pumps out, I was head to toe in sewage, the pumps had shut down, and I spent not only my first day, but my first week on the job dealing with a pretty severe septic wow. issue. Wow. And this is a building that there's 55 people working in, so we needed toilets that ran, we needed sinks that worked, and everybody was giving me a hard time because I made them go across to the other building to use the bathroom and they couldn't use the sinks and it was a real mess. But I'll tell you, everyone got to step over not only the septic tank but me holding my, my wrench uh, on their way into work every morning. And so I got to meet everybody and uh, eventually I did fix the septic and I'll tell you, when you get the toilets working, 
you become Mr. Popular. So oh, I bet so. It, it, life got a little easier after that, um, but that was my uh, my uh, introduction to the Outward Bound School. And then um, from that first day, they, that first week, they were probably like, "This guy is a keeper. We're never going to let him go." If he can fix go. the septic tank, he can fix anything. Yeah. And little did I know, <laughs> I'd be knee deep in septic for pretty much the rest of my career at Outward Bound. But that's okay. I don't mind it. Wow. So from that point, so I can't believe after the first week you were like, not like, I'm out of here. Like, I can't take no, any no, more no, of this no, no. stuff. I, could, I, I can handle that. It's okay. like, what else you got? Come on, what else you got? What are some of the funniest or like most bizarre stories or things that you've had to deal with? Because of all the things you've had to deal with, I just think even from the time that I've been here in the past several years, like past three years, the things that have happened. But I mean, I know there's got to be a lot of other contenders. Well, oh, it's for um, top Amanda, it just, it's endless. I was just thinking on my way up from Portland this morning. Several of the stories involve animals, you know, believe it or not. Now, Hurricane Island's not a huge island, but there's a few animals out there. Mm -hmm. So we already talked about the seagull. Um, later that summer, um, actually it was the next summer because I had a, a small baby. My, my son Andrew was out there with us. Uh, Ian, I'm sorry, um, who was just about nine or ten months old at that point. And it happened to be Father's Day. I do remember mm -hmm. that. So I was out in my cabin after dinner with my wife and my young son just enjoying the evening. And my helper, Mike, and, and his friend Jordan came over and knocked on my door and said, we know it's Father's Day, but you better come over to the quarry. There's a, there's a rabid raccoon over here. And we think, oh, dear. We think you're the guy that needs to deal with the raccoon. So I go over to the quarry, and sure enough, there's a rabid raccoon sitting on a rock, kind of hissing and pissing and kind of pissed was off. He like, was he foaming? He was, he was foaming they have, and like, gnarly. Was and, it like the rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail? It was kind of like the rabbit on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah. And, but I did not have the holy hand grenade, you see. So we're trying to figure out what do we do about this raccoon. We can't just leave it here. It's going to attack somebody. Well, Mike got an idea. I'll go get a canvas duffel bag. We'll get the raccoon in the duffel bag. Okay, well, we didn't really think much further than that, so we were able to sneak up behind the raccoon and get him in the duffel bag. All right, now we got a rabid raccoon in the duffel bag. And I'll tell you what, that was one mean, nasty, ugly raccoon, and he did not want to be in the duffel bag. Oh, I can see why. And let's fast forward uh, a little bit later, and about a month later, I started hearing reports about a little miniature deer running around the island. And I thought, you know what? I'm all over this island. I haven't seen a deer. You guys are hallucinating. Right. Well, turns out there was a little deer. Very much like the little key deer down in Big Pine Key. Mm -hmm. No bigger than a, a little dog. And you could actually go up and, and pet the deer and feed the deer. And, and uh, they were given the deer food. And, and they, they actually named it Zoe. Aww. So little Zoe was one. And it was kind of the island deer. And everybody liked Zoe. And it was not a problem. Until our annual general meeting which is when everyone, all the board and the trustees and, and staff would come out, um, usually right after Labor Day, mm -hmm. uh, several hundred people on the island, and we'd have a big lobster bake and the annual general meeting. Well, one of the older trustees was walking up to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and mm -hmm. Zoe ran in front of him, and he tripped and broke his arm. Mm -hmm. Well, Joan Welsh was president at the time, so she said, the deer has got to go. The deer has got to go. Oh, no. And they thought this would be a good job for me to get the deer off the island. Well, I'm thinking, you know what? This deer is so friendly. If you can walk up and pet it, surely you can walk up and put a leash around its neck. And <laughs> I'm, I'm going to walk it down to the dock, and I'm going to put it on the boat, and I'm going to take it over to Green's Island right across the way. Yeah. Because I had a sneaking suspicion that Margaret Nugent brought the deer over from Green's Island because it was probably eating her garden. So in the winter, she brought the deer over to Hurricane. Well, I'm just going to take the deer back. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, that deer, that little deer was friendly right up until you put the noose on its neck. Oh, my gosh. Then it turned into the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. That thing was bad. It was kicking. It was, it was, it was frightening. But, of course, I've got the deer by the leash. Deer wants to run this way. It does not want to go on the boat, does not want to go near the dock, yeah. wants to get away from me. And uh, Rob, Rob Dwelly was helping me out with this one, and we were pretty, we were freaked out. We didn't want to get, the thing was kicking and bucking. So finally, uh, Rob distracted it to such that I could get up and get the noose off its neck. The thing bolted away into the woods. I don't think we ever saw Zoe again. We didn't see it again that fall, and by the time we got back the next spring, Zoe had left the island one way or another.
Wow. So that was my other animal story. So the, I guess the moral of the story is like you wouldn't want to put a leash on a deer. Don't ever put a leash on a deer, even a key deer. They might look cute, but they they do not want to be. They're not pets. They do not want to be. Yeah. They do not want to be um, pets. How would you describe Outward Bound to somebody? So you're, you've been a loyal employee and for you know, 20 years now, and surely you have people saying like, oh, you've been with Outward Bound for 20 years. Why have you been there for 20 years? Or have wanted to learn more about Outward Bound programs. So, I mean, how have your, what do you share with people when they ask you those sorts of things? Well, number one for me, I think it's a little special because um, my skill set and the needs of the job are, are just, it's, it's a perfect synchronicity. And it's, it's the most dynamic job I've ever had. And I've had some fun jobs. But the, the challenges, the, some repeat year after year. But every year there's new challenges to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me that the biggest part is just it's, it's a mission that I so believe in. And you could see, you can go down to any course when the day the kids arrive, get off the bus, get on the boats. You know, they're all kind of nervous. They're kind of pasty and, and, and shy and and a little nervous, and then when you see them sailing in a couple, three weeks later, they're hooting and hollering, and they're <laughs> dirty and sweaty and sunburned and, and hugging each other, and you just know that something has really taken place within them. And you see that you see that time and again all summer long. And then the other thing is the staff that teach them. These, these guys are just, you know, the, the, the women and the guys that are teaching our courses are just absolutely phenomenal. You know, the, so true. The, the patience that they have. And I've got a couple of teenagers. It's all I can do to be a father. Um, <laughs> to go out with a boatload of teenagers for weeks on end, 24 hours a day, I don't know how they do it, honestly. It's, uh, it's, uh, these, guys are, these guys are incredible professionals. But it's just, you know, it's, uh, we're operating in some of the most drop-dead beautiful scenery. You know, our cruising mm -hmm. grounds, our bases, you know, whether it's in the mountains or out on the islands or along the shore. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm working in the boathouse with Chris, sometimes we'll just turn around and look off at the sea and say, you know, can you believe, you know, we're, 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 we're getting paid to work here. <laughs> um, even when we're going out on a mission, you know, to do something, you know, you load some tools on the boat and you go out and you see in whales and seals and mm -hmm. eagles and um, you know, Chris and I were up in one of the pulling boats on, on the parking lot uh, fixing something a couple of years ago and I looked up 15 feet above us this bald eagle just came soaring right down right right over top of us just unbelievable and so it's it's just a, it's a combination of the of the of the richness of the job that it's it's a constant challenge with with new challenges every year so there's not a, a stale or a boring moment it's the quality of the program, you know, what we offer now. We celebrated 50 years a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. so we're, you have the depth uh, of, the, of the experience. You have the breadth of the experience with the different courses that we offer. Uh, you know, the younger staff, you know, some of the, the new staff that are coming through right now are phenomenal. You still have some of the older staff around, you know. Mm -hmm. you're, you're working with some of the same people, you know, we're raising our kids together, we're 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 struggling with the same things you know we managed to kind of like the phoenix you know arise from the ashes mm -hmm. after the affiliation and we're, we're we're leaner and we're stronger and uh, we're running a real tight ship now and it just it just feels so good every day even though as i said i just came from a meeting with the coast guard uh who offer their own challenges in my life but um you know I, I, we overcome the challenges we you know get these people on our side they buy into what we're doing they believe in what we're doing and uh, everybody benefits. So it's just been a, it's been a very rewarding experience, um, all in all. You know, even with the antics, you know, the fun. We still have time to have fun, and uh, and uh, you know, we work hard, we play hard. Um, you know, we laugh and bleed and cry together, and it just it, it's it's a great it's a great time. Well, I'm so glad that you've been around for 20 years, and that I can I'm here now to ask you absurd questions all the time. Um, so that's, that's great. And I should add in closing here that if you have any questions for John, for our Dear John series, email info at hiobs.org. That's info at H-I-O-B-S.org. You can ask John anything. There's pretty much anything, no anything. nothing that he's not willing to answer, outward bound related or otherwise. So thanks for being with us today, John. You bet, Amanda. It was great. Bye.